Oh, hey YouTube, uh, hope y'all had a nice and wonderful holiday season. I sure did. Eh, more or less. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Why Doreen Irvine's testimony couldn't possibly be true. Quite simply, it doesn't stand up to the facts. First and foremost, witches are not Satanists. This conflation appears again and again in the testimony of so-called former witches. Some Christians will even try to tell you that Wiccans and Pagans only pretend to be devoted to earth religions. And in reality, their devil worshippers bent on destroying Christianity. As anyone familiar with Satanism, Paganism, Witchcraft, and the state of modern Christianity knows, this is completely crap. Hell-bent on destroying Christianity? Well, a lot of uh, Christian cults are collapsing under the weight of their own hypocrisy. Just Google search uh, church pedophilia lawsuits. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Satanism, paganism, and witchcraft are far more than just knee-jerk reactions to Christianity. In fact... These three uh, spiritual paths predate Christianity by thousands of years. Christianity is only what, less than 2,000 years old. And paganism, witchcraft, they go back, geez, to Neolithic times, at least. They have diff uh, distinct beliefs. Yes, they have historical proof. They have rules and rituals all unrelated to Christianity. Next one is, no satanic or witchcraft movement has encompassed all of Europe. Even in pre-Christian Europe, pagan beliefs were regional and diverse. Celtic culture, for instance, had different gods and customs than Nordic ones did. Today, covens operate more or less independently, except for a few organizations such as uh, the Church and School of Wicca, uh, Black Forest Clan, and groups like that. The notion of a single continent-wide satanic church with a tightly organized hierarchical structure existing from ancient times is pure fantasy. If a satanic ancient order did exist, its hierarchy would surely have a little bit better, better defined titles and roles. There's basically zero evidence of that in Doreen's account. She says virtually nothing about her duties as Queen of the Black Witches, and she refers to her male counterpart by the generic title of Chief Satanist, a term that no established satanic organization uses. Loose terminology is a recurrent problem in these ex-Satanist witch testimonies. And here's the kicker. Irvine contradicts herself repeatedly. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Just like John Todd, Mike Warnke, Bill Snedlin, blah, 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 blah. For example, rule number four of Satanism is supposedly that Satanists must never enter Christian churches. Yet, Doreen tells us that she and her co-religionists frequently entered churches to steal and burn Bibles. Her account is uncorroborated. In the four decades that have passed since Doreen Irvine began sharing her story, not one of her, the other thousands of so-called black witches has ever appeared, and no evidence of their existence has surfaced. <laughs> Imagine that. The other ex-Satanists, uh, you know, such as Bill Schnebelin, uh, Mike Warnke, and John Todd, etc., describe covens much different from uh, Doreen's. In fact, despite the superficial similarities of their accounts, every, of the, every one of these former Satanists seems to describe a different system of Satanism, even though most of them claim to be describing the worldwide Church of Satan. And uh, Doreen presents no evidence. This is another issue that cross up, crops up again and again in uh, ex-Satanist testimonies. People who have defected from secretive cults have generally been able to provide some evidence that they actually belong to these groups. Ex-Satanists like Irvine, however, provide zero evidence. No temples have been found, though they were of considerable size and were used frequently by hundreds of people. No one has seen a copy of the massive Book of Satan that Doreen mentioned, and she will not reproduce passages from it. 
There's not a single photograph or document accompanying Doreen's presentation. Not one other defector has appeared, and she refuses to divulge any names or location associated with these black witches. Other claims in Doreen's story make absolutely no sense at all. Reverend Arthur Neal, the Bristol minister who exercised Doreen in 1965, wrote the introduction from Witchcraft to Christ. In it, he included a letter sent to him by Doreen in which she states that brain scans and x-rays taken prior to her exorcism revealed that she had extensive brain damage. She was also diagnosed as schizophrenic and was suffering from unnamed physical and neurological problems so severe that doctors gave her about six months to live. X-rays taken after the exorcism, however, showed no evidence of brain damage. Ergo, she concludes, demons had caused brain damage that was miraculously cured. This is all very problematic for two reasons. First of all, x-rays do not show brain tissue. The most they can do is reveal skull damage indicating underlying tissue damage. Secondly, Doreen does not explicitly state that she was cured of the schizophrenia and the other unspecified ailments. Doreen's conversion story served both as an inspiration to Christians and as an evangelical tool to be used on people they hoped to convert. It contained a powerful message of redemption. Even if a drug-addicted prostitute who worshipped the devil can be saved, then no one is beyond the grasp of Jesus. Any and all can be saved and no sin is unforgivable. Doreen's story also served to foster complete reliance on Jesus Christ. You can't change yourself, she told her audiences. Only Jesus can change you. Doreen's testimony was soon used for another purpose, to counteract the effects of the burgeoning New Age movement and the various alternative religions that be had become popular in the 1960s. Its hegemony seriously threatened for the first time by other religions, the Christian Church in America and the UK, particularly the fundamentalist denominations, launched an anti-occult crusade. Preachers warned of the spiritual hazard posed by Halloween, rock music, Ouija boards, horror movies, and occult bookstores. Doreen's story was cited extensively by the late Dr. Kurt Cox in his book Occult ABC and by Russ Parker in his book Battling the Occult. Doreen's book and the testimonies that followed provided tangible evidence of a spiritual battle between the forces of God and the forces of evil. They helped mobilize Christians for spiritual warfare, created cohesion among believers by identifying a common enemy, and up morale. And I bet you it uh, boosted their bank accounts a lot, too. Yep. After all, conversions like Doreen Irvine's can make the enemy appear like a worthy opponent destined to be vanquished. Doreen's testimony is still being used in this way today. One Baptist blogger recently wrote, quote, one has only to read the testimonies of Dr. Rebecca Brown and Doreen Irvine and, most, and of most missionaries to realize that there are dark forces assailed against us." End quote. In the late 1980s, Irvine actively joined in the anti-occult crusade in the UK spearheaded by the late Godfrey Dickens, or Jeffrey Dickens, excuse me. Maureen Davies of the Reach Out Trust, Dan Core of Child Find, the Reverend Kevin Logan, and others. Uh, Dickens called for all forms of witchcraft to be outlawed in England, while Corr and Davies disseminated alarmist misinformation about satanic ritual abuse and satanic crime. Reverend Logan performed mass ex exorcisms on ritually abused children and counseled adults who claimed to be former Satanists. Doreen also counseled former Satanists, joined the investigation committee of the Evangelical Alliance, and became representative for the UK Campus Crusade for Christ. She and Maureen Davies appeared in Carol Matrischiana's documentary, Devil Worship, The Rise of Satanism. By this time, Satanism wasn't just a threat to strippers anymore. <laughs> Dickens, Core, and cohorts insisted that children were being satanically abused from infancy by parents, daycare providers, and pornographers. Every atrocity imaginable was being committed by these fiends. Incest, torture, ritual human sacrifice bestiality, child sex slavery, and prostitution. However, there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever of these goings on, so testimony like Irvine's became indispensable as the only evidence that a well-organized criminal satanic underground was operating in the UK. 
Doreen's influence on a younger generation of women soon became evident and her results were grim. In 1987, a deeply troubled 20-year-old woman named Carolyn Marchant received counseling at the Zion Christian Temple at Yale, or Yate, near Bristol. One of her counselors was Doreen Irvine. Carolyn claimed that at the age of 13 she had been sexually initiated into a satanic cult in Norfolk by her boyfriend's parents. She gave birth to a child that year, but the birth was unregistered and the baby was taken from her and shipped to America by the Satanists. She also went, underwent at least one abortion. The teenage father of her first baby was ritually murdered in her presence by his own father, a leading member of the cult. The cult also sacrificed newborns on a regular basis, or so she claimed. Over the next eight years, Carolyn became a high priestess of Satan, worked as a prostitute and abused drugs. The Satanists ritually abused her throughout this time, raping her and carving symbols of the, t on the inside of her vagina. Ouch! That's gotta hurt. Anyway, in, in 1985, she joined a Baptist church and gave her testimony to the congregation. She didn't mention Satanism or abuse, but did say that she had been raped while living in Norfolk. During 1986, she spent several periods at residential healing centers operated by evangelical Christians and began to speak of Satanism. For the rest of her life, she sought refuge in the homes of evangelical Christians who seemed sympathetic to her troubles. One Christian couple, however, was harsh with her. Believing that she was not telling them the full story of her satanic past, they ordered her to either confess all her sins to Maureen Davies of Reach Out Trust, or she would be cast out of their house like Cain to wander as a fugitive for the remainder of her life. So Carolyn contacted Davies and told her whole story. Maureen Davies introduced Carolyn to Kevin Logan, Logan took her into his home, and turned her, uh, he had turned uh, St. John's Vicarage near Blackburn, Lincolnshire, in England into a halfway house for ex-Satanists and witches. On the morning of February 16, 1990, Logan found Carolyn unconscious in her room. She had taken a fatal dose of the antidepressants she had been uh, prescribed, and she died 19 days later. Davies and Logan told the press that Satanists had pursued Caroline after her defection from the cult. Increasingly fearful of being killed for her betrayal, she took her own life. That was the bullshit story given to London's Sunday Mirror, which on March 25, 1990, published an account of Karen's life under the headline, I Sacrificed My Babies to Satan. However, the article didn't mention that Carolyn had taken her fatal overdose while in the care of Kevin Logan. Kind of left that part out. <laughs> the real story of Carolyn's life emerged after that article came out. Carolyn's divorced father, Les Marchant, was a self-employed builder in Haynes, Hayes, Middlesex. He placed his two children in foster care because he found it difficult to raise them on his own. Shortly before Carolyn's 13th birthday in 1979, foster parents Gordon and May Porter moved to a horse farm in Norfolk. For the next four years, Carolyn and younger brother Ian lived in bo uh, border house stables in Fordham with several other foster children and a porter's own daughters. She rode horses and took dancing lessons. She had medical checkups every six months and was closely supervised. The porters, her friends, and her foster siblings agreed that she could not possibly have been pregnant during this time. After high school, Carolyn earned her certificate as a trainee instructor in horse management, then worked as a nanny before becoming dependent on her fellow Christians for housing and support. When she killed herself, she left behind bizarre and contradictory accounts of her supposed satanic past. The solicitor hired for her by Maureen Davies, Ronald Marshall, believed she possessed information about snuff movies, child sacrifice, satanic financing, arms deals involving the IRA and the Bader Meinhof gang, and shady political dealings. There is absolutely no evidence that Carolyn Marchant had any knowledge of these things. In fact, everything she said and wrote about Satanism seemed to come from Christian sources. Her incomplete autobiography uh, plagiarized passages from uh, Doreen Irvine's book From Witchcraft to Christ. Describing her first encounter with her devil-worshipping boyfriend, she wrote, quote, He explained the difference between being good and what good really was. Evil was right. It sounded crazy to me, but I was soon brainwashed into that way of thought. Compare this to a passage in From Witchcraft to Christ, which reads, I was taught that evil is not wrong, but right and good. It sounded stupid to me, but I started to believe it. It was a kind of brainwashing. 
You never get to Carolyn's initiation story. Quote, when the time came, I stepped forward up to the altar, and an incision was made on my arm, and some of the blood caught up in the cup with the cockerel's blood. That sounds exactly like uh, the scene described in my last video, where uh, Doreen uh, drank some chicken blood with uh, a cut, uh, blood from a cut on her arm. Hmm. Busted. Continuing. A second post-mortem uh, exam conducted on Carolyn's body by Leeds-based pathologist Dr. Michael Green could not determine if Carolyn had ever given birth. There was no conclusive evidence of sexual abuse. The genital mutilations were not evident at all. <laughs> Carolyn Marchant was not the only so-called ex-Satanist taken under the wing of the UK anti-occult crusaders during this time. Former devil worshiper and born-again evangelical Christian Audrey Harper became a member of the Reach Out Trust, lecturing widely on the dangers posed by Satanists in the UK. She claimed that she had been lured into a posh Satanic coven in the late 1960s when she was a homeless, drug-addicted prostitute. Oh, there's another uh, common theme in uh, these ex-witch Satanist story, particularly among females. Anyway. In 1988, she gave her story to the Sunday Sport. In that article, she described how she'd been initiated into Satanism, Satanism at a ceremony in which the throat of a rooster was slit and blood smeared on her body. Two years later, when her memoir, Dance with the Devil, was published, the sacrificed rooster had become a sacrificed baby. Oh, how the times and stories change.